Hey Dan and Nikki. It's Wednesday, sometime in the middle of September. Marshall. Marshall. Yes. And I are heading up to Minneapolis to go see uh, the Iron and Wine concert at First Avenue Theater in downtown Minneapolis. So it's about 4.30 hour time. And um, we are, yeah, we're heading up there. So we're going to, the show, let's see, the doors open at 7. It's festival seating. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of inclined to get there, you know, a little early, get in line, so that we get a choice of seats. Uh, we'll bring a book, we'll bring something to read. And um, in the meantime, we're heading, uh, heading north, um, and I will make some more video uh, as we go. And... Um, So here we are back home. Oh, about 1.15 in the morning we finally rolled in last night. Um, as you can see in that last clip just how close we were standing. I don't know if it, if it really, um, and there were a couple of clips I know that were so dark which was too bad, but the clip of um, actual of Iron and Wine performing um, was, you know, was great. Um, you could see Sam Beam pretty well. You could see how close we were the whole time. I mean we were standing so to give you the sense of what this First Avenue Theater was like, it really was more just like a big bar. It was, um, the downstairs was about, I don't know, maybe 50 yards deep, maybe 50 yards wide. It was like a big square, but it was all completely open. There was a stage, there were no chairs, and then what you had to do is you had to, oh, I'm going to see if I can plug this in real quick. Oh, I don't think I have the right plug in. Anyway. You, you know, so you had to stand the whole time, and we were standing right next to the stage watching. Um, there were, it was really a sort of a bar. Um, hold on. There we go. Oh, let's see if I can get this plugged in soon enough before it dies. Ah. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Did I get it? Yeah. No. Still recording? I think so. Anyway, so um, the the stage was, um, you know, so we were standing right next to the stage, and behind the big open area there was a bar, and on, the, on either side there was a bar, and there was a balcony area that ran around the three side, the two sides in the back, 
um, that was all set, and they had some bar stools up there and a couple of tables, but it was almost all standing room. Um, and they had more bars up there, so 90% of the people had booze, you know, in their hand. Um, um, as we were, oh, hi. Um, I'm not sure this is recording. I'm going to hit stop and I'll, and I'll start again. Huh, I guess it was. Anyway, they had booze in their hands. Um, and um, what I found out, what I didn't realize, was that 80% of the, of the shows at this particular venue are 18 and up. Um, you know, even though it's a bar, uh, you know, they want to have some controls with the minors being in there. Not the minors, with under a, um, with um, juveniles being in there. So we got up to um, the door. We had gotten there early and we're standing in line. And we got up to the door with our tickets. Um, and um, he asked for my ID. And it's like, okay. So I'll give my ID. And he's asked for Marshall's ID. And it's like, well, he doesn't have ID. He's a freshman in high school. He's my son. He's like, oh, well, this is an 18, you know, you have to be over 18 for this show tonight. And it's like, oh, great. I said, well, I, you know, I told him I had no clue about that. Um, so what he did is he put big black X's on my hand and wouldn't give me a, um, even though I was over 18, wouldn't give me the privilege of buying alcohol in the venue, which was uh, obviously fine. Um, that way he knew that Marsha would have a sober ride home, which, again, it's just, it's all liability, I'm assuming. But uh, once we were inside, I mean, it was packed. I mean, we, when we were standing next to the stage, and we were just shoulder to shoulder with people. Um, and there were waitresses coming through the crowd, delivering beer. So, I mean, it, frankly, it would have been hard for Marshall to, to have bought a beer or to at least get one. So, um, it was, um, um, but it was, it was pretty cool. It was a, kind of a cool show for Marshall. Of course, there was somebody smoking weed in the crowd. But you could see how close we were to the musicians. And there was a lot of kind of not yelling, but talking back and forth between the musician between Sam, really, he was the, you know, obviously the, the main spokesperson for the band, uh, and the crowd. Um, some yelling. Most of it, almost all of it good-natured. And, um, but, uh, you know, literally we sit on our feet for four hours. Um, uh, but the cool thing about the band is I didn't realize, I was just thinking it was going to be Sam Bean coming out, but it was a 12-piece band with him, you know what I mean? He had three horns. Um, one of whom also played, um, actually both played clarinet, so, um, and then one of them played tenor sax, one played berry sax, and then one guy was on trumpet, and they all danced while they were, you know, while they were playing, or in between while they were playing. Uh, he had three strings, um, two violins, and a cello. He had three backup singers, uh, percussionist, keyboardist, and electric bassist. So it was actually really really cool. So what he did is he played they played a full set with the whole or with the whole group, the whole band, then everybody but the keyboardist and the strings left, and then they played three or four songs, and then they then the keyboardist left, they played another couple songs, and then the strings left, and then Sam Bean played like six songs by himself. Then the entire group came back on and they played like six more songs. And then they left, and of course we encored Sam Bean back on. He came back and played one song, one more song by himself. So it was, um, it was a pretty cool show. It was it, the the place held maybe 400 people, so it was it was really small. But again, where you how close you got was dictated purely by what your desire was. I mean, at any point in the show, you could elbow your way up front if you wanted. Um, but it was, um, you know, it was pretty crazy. Huge bouncers. Um, most of the people were pretty well behaved, but I mean they've got they've got some crazy concerts they play in there, like Anthrax or Black Flag play in there. So you can imagine what how crazy that would be. Um, but generally, it's um, um, you know Prince actually still plays in there. There's actually some stuff footage from Purple Rain, the movie that was filmed in First Avenue Theater. Um, and what was funny is directly across the street was the Target Center. Um, which is where Marshall and I saw Foster the People last year. Um, but the Eagles were playing there the same night, last night. So it was really funny watching that crowd show up, you know, all of whom were older than me, and then the crowd for Iron and Wine. Um, so it was, uh, it was interesting. It was, um, I got kind of a different vibe off of, off of Sam Beam than I have 
than I've gotten off from watching a lot of his videos. So um, anyway, it was a uh, it was a good show. So all right, I'll conclude this, uh, and I think I'm going to go I don't know, do something really important. So uh, go USA.